All right, so today we're going to continue uh, 9.5b, and really today we're going to talk about polar and rectangular equations. Okay, so yesterday we figured out those four pieces of information that we need to remember. So let's just make ourselves a note again. Um, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Uh, we know that x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine of theta, and tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So those were those four pieces that we talked about yesterday, and you definitely need all of those for 9.5. Okay, so today we're going to start out by converting the rectangular equation to a polar equation. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we're going to be given an equation that has x and y in it, and we need to get r and theta. Okay, so we're going to use these um, pieces of information to substitute, all right, and then hopefully get this down to where we just have r and theta, okay? You know you're done when you have an r equals equation or theta equals equation. So let's start out with x squared plus y squared equals 16. Okay, so my goal is to take that x and y and change it somehow to either be an r or theta. So, any thoughts? Oh, we just jumped really far ahead. One more step before we get there. What is x squared plus y squared? r squared, so we should replace it. So we play, replace it with r squared. We're not done, though, because we want it to just be an r equals. So how do you get r by itself? take the square root. So we get r equals 4 and you assume the positive. Okay? So now let's just take a look what just happened here. Yeah? Why not? So you're going to, this is going to be a directed distance for r we talked about yesterday. That's what r represents. So we're always going to talk about the positive there. Okay? Now, think about what just happened here. This rectangular equation, what is it an equation of? A circle. And where is the center? And what is the radius? Four. Four. Okay, so can you imagine a circle right now with a center of zero, zero, and a radius of four, what it would look like? Graphed. Okay? Now I want you to imagine a polar graph. What does R equal four mean? It goes four out everywhere, right? So what would that form? A circle centered at the pole, which is the origin with a radius of four. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So that's your final answer there. Okay. How about y equals eight? No, we're done. Mm -mm. Sometimes it's just going to be r equals. Sometimes it's going to be theta equals. Sometimes it's just going to have both. Okay. So, <clears throat> taking a look at B, what do you have to do? Even? Yeah, Y is equal to R sine of theta. Okay. This has to say R equals, though, to be done. So, what do we have to do next? So, divide by sine on both sides, maybe? Right? If you have 8 over sine of theta, what is that the same as? Go back to chapter 4. Yes, 8 cosecant of theta. Come on, that was the easy one. <laughs> That's like a thing you should remember. Yes, yes, that is assumed that you would remember that. Okay, how about x squared plus y squared minus 8y equals 0? Mm -hmm. 
What's x squared plus y squared? R squared. So we have half of it um, taken care of. What about that y? What is this the same as? R sine of theta. Okay, now the goal is to get an R equals equation. So right now we have an R in common with both of those terms. What can we do? We can factor it out. So we would be left with R minus 8 sine of theta. Okay, now we're not solving here. We're just manipulating the equation. Okay, so this is like a time when you're allowed to, to divide both sides by that R to get rid of it. All right, because we're not solving. We're just trying to get this polar equation. So we're going to divide both sides by r there, giving us r minus 8 sine of theta equals 0. We're trying to get an r equals. So what do I have to do last? Just add over, Just add over that 8 sine of theta. There will be. That's 9, 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yes, Ethan. Would it be okay if you added over the 8 R sine theta before? Yes, and then divided by R. Yep. Okay, how about x squared equals 5y? Can you guys quit talking in the back? Thanks so much. What about this one? Can you replace x squared with um, 16 minus y squared with the same thing as y, just plug in r sine of theta? I think that might be a little... Yeah, where are we getting 16? Or not 16. Well, we just convert. r squared minus y squared. Okay, so you could. You could introduce an r squared and a y. The problem is then you have this y to deal with. Luke. Okay, so we'll change this y to r sine of theta. You can separate the x into 2, and then you can just do the same thing multiplied by you know, twice. Yeah, so x is just r cosine of theta, and we're just going to square that piece. Okay, so now we're going to get r squared cosine squared of theta equals 5 r sine of theta. Okay, the goal is to just get a single R, so what should I do now? <coughs> Rafi? Okay, yeah, you're on the right track. I'm going to divide by that cosine squared. I can also, Brett, go ahead. Yeah, so I can really just divide right now by r. Okay, so this is going to give me r cosine squared of theta equals 5 sine of theta. And now I can divide by that cosine squared. You could have really done that all in one step previously. Okay, now let's think about this. So when you have 5 over sine um, or 5 times sine of over cosine squared, that is the same as having 5 times sine over cosine times 1 over cosine, right? Which I can use our reciprocal identities here, which is something you should know. And this gives you r equals 5 tangent theta secant theta. Okay, do you see what happened there? You split that into those two fractions, okay, and then use the reciprocal identities. Yes? Okay. Um, you try this one. 3x minus 2y plus 1 equals 0.
So did you start by replacing X and Y? And moving over the 1 at some point? Okay. Then you should see this R in common, so you can factor out the R, leaving you with 3 cosine theta minus 2 <coughs> sine of theta equals negative 1. Now you're going to get R by itself, so you're going to divide by that entire quantity there, right? So we're going to divide by 3 cosine theta whoopsie, minus 2 sine of theta. When you do that, there's no way to simplify this. You can't break that up because of the subtraction. So this is your final answer. Yes? Yes, that would be wrong. Yeah, you can't split this fraction. Only when it's in the numerator. Okay? All right. Um, are you okay with example one then? Converting from rectangular to polar. Okay, now we're going to go the other way. Um, this way is a little bit more difficult to see the steps. So convert polar equation to rectangular. All right, so we're going to start out with r equals 2 cosine of theta. Okay, so now our goal is to get rid of r and theta, introduce x and y, and then when we're finished, we want to bring everything to one side and set it equal to zero. Okay, so that's how your format will be here. Every single thing gets moved to the left and you set it equal to zero. Okay, <coughs> okay. so any thoughts on a? Go ahead, Derek. Um, could you replace like, the two cosine of theta with like, two y? Not yet. Two Not yet, because what are we missing? An r, right? It has to be r times the cosine of theta. So I'm missing an r here on the right. What am I missing on the left? I'm missing a cosine or a sine or an r, right? You can multiply both sides by r. So because I'm missing an R in both of those places, that's what I would want to do. So you multiply both sides by R and you get R squared equals 2R cosine theta. Okay. Well, now what's R squared? X squared plus Y squared. And what is R cosine theta? X. So you replace that. Now you've taken care of all of the r's and the theta, so you're ready to move everything to one side, set it equal to zero. So x squared plus y squared minus 2x equals zero. Okay. Um, how about this one? r equals 2 secant of theta. What do you want to do here? So if I multiply it by r, um, I would have an r squared and a 2c or 2r secant. So I don't have a formula for that one. Yeah, what's secant? 1 over cosine. So couldn't I change this to ch um, 2 over cosine of theta? Which just made this become a proportion. Right? So we can cross multiply at that point. Giving me r cosine of theta equals 2. What's r cosine? x, so now I get x equals 2. 
I've replaced r and theta. I'm ready to bring it over to one side. So x minus 2 equals 0. Okay. Um, how about this? r equals 1 over 2 cosine theta minus 5 sine theta. Yeah, we should make this one a proportion as well because, see, we're missing our r uh, for cosine and sine. So if we multiply by that r, I'm able to get both of those pieces. So I have 2r cosine theta minus 5r sine theta equals 1. r cosine is just x and r sine is y. And then we can bring over the 1. <clears throat> you try this one. So the first step should be pretty easy, and then it gets a little trickier. Did you cross multiply? So you got r plus r cosine theta equals 1. Did you replace r cosine with x? Okay. But now we still have this one r to deal with. So what do you want to do? Okay, subtract the x. You get r equals 1 minus x. Now what? Not the final answer. Uh, this has to be only in terms of x and y. No r. So if I multiply by r, I'll get r squared here on the left, but on the right I'll have r minus rx. So now I just introduce two new groups. <coughs> so you could square both sides. So if you square both sides, you end up with r squared equals 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And what's r squared? x squared plus y squared. At that point you've gotten rid of everything that you needed to and you can bring everything to one side. Okay, so you gotta be careful. You, It looks like you understand that you need that r squared, so don't always try to multiply by r. You could also try to square both sides that, and get it that way as well. Okay. One more type of problem. Um, what if you had like theta equals pi over 4? Pardon me? Don't you know your x and y? So your x and y. Explain that a little bit more. Okay, so right now you're thinking about the unit circle coordinates. That's good. That's a that's a good place to take your mind, but we gotta somehow be able to get to those coordinates. So any thoughts? This is weird. What do you mean get to the coordinates? We have to draw a picture? Well, we don't have to draw a picture, but we have to somehow introduce a trig function to get there. So what you can do is you can take the tangent of both sides. It seems so strange. Okay? But you're allowed to do that. So this is going to be the tangent of theta equals the tangent of pi over 4. Now the reason why you're going to use tangent and not like sine or cosine is because if you go back to our box of formulas, we know that tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So now I can take this tangent of theta and I can replace it with y over x that way. Now I could have done the cosine or the sine, but then I would replace it with like x over r or y over r. So again, introducing that new r value. What's the tangent of pi over 4? 1. And then we're just going to, again, cross multiply. So y equals x. Bring it to one side. x minus y equals 0. You are. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> 